You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. All right, everybody, that music means it's time once again for Options Playbook Radio, the program here on the old network where we break down the world of options into some offensive and defensive plays that you guys can use in your own portfolio. Maybe you want to go on defense, you want to protect the gains you've made, maybe we go on offense, make a little bit more. Either way, we've got you covered here. My name is Mark Longo from the old optionsinsider.com as well as on the Options Insider Radio Network. If you're saying to yourself, wait a minute, hold the horses, hold the phone, I thought it was that other guy who hosted the show. You are correct, so let me toss it to that other guy. Mr. Brian Overby, the titular options guy over there at Ally Invest. Brian, welcome back to your own program, sir. Well, it's always great to be back, Mark, and uh, welcome to everybody for the 2019 year. And it's always a great way to start the year is by answering some of our listener questions. So I think we should get together and huddle up. The Huddle. It's time to huddle up and answer questions about your favorite options plays. Submit your questions via questions at theoptionsinsider.com, twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via the trader network at tradeking.com. All right, everybody. Time to huddle up, like Brian said, and answer some of your questions. We got to. Just a, a bunch of them here, Brian, so let's let's get rolling. They're not taking the new year off by any means. They're diving right in, so we'll do so as well. Let's kick things off with a question from Paul, Paul Vasquez. We discussed this on a recent show, but I want to make sure we also discussed it here because it's a good question, and it's a topic I don't think we've ever actually addressed on the program before, but it's, it's so basic and so important to options that I think is definitely worth discussing here. This comes from Paul Vasquez. He wants to know, when is the quote-unquote official close as far as options expiration is concerned? I've had calls assigned and had stocks put to me when the strike was out of the money at market close, but it moved in and out during the after hours trading. Any light you can shed on how options expiration work would be appreciated. Thanks, Paul, this is a great question, Paul, and perfect for this program. You know, it's funny, Brian, when this came in, I was thinking about it. And, you know, this used to be a much bigger deal, I think, back when expiration itself was a bigger deal. You know, we had the monthly every Friday expiration. So that expiration Friday was a big deal, and everyone focused a lot on it. And when the options went out, you still had that window of a few hours after expiration that you had to pay attention to the stocks and what was going on in other related stocks or because you, you never knew what was going to happen in the after hours. We fortunately would always go around and close out all of our near the money strikes just so we didn't have to worry about this. But if you didn't, if you had some legacy strikes open, you had to pay attention because if the underlying moved in the after hours, you could then turn around and assign options that you thought would be worthless, but now actually have some worth because the underlying has moved in the after hours or Vice versa, you could have options assigned against you if you're not paying attention and the underlying moves. Then you need to hedge with underlying or vice versa. So there's a lot 
going on in the after hours. And, you know, now that expiration is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it's pretty much every day at this point. It's lost a little bit of its majesty, a little bit of its luster. And this is obviously a laborious thing. You usually have to call up your broker and do it. So it takes a little bit of work. But it's certainly something that, as Paul has learned, to his detriment, it sounds like, this can come back to bite you if you're not aware of it. So, Brian, why don't you walk our listeners through what that window after the close actually is and, you know, what they can do then? Yes. And uh, obviously, Paul's done some trading because if he's had this happen to him, I, I feel for him because if you do get assigned after hours, that usually isn't a good thing for you. That means that the stock has moved against you. But yes, uh, after any expiration, you, there's about an hour window that people can go on out and still exercise their option contract. I actually don't know the exact time off the top of my head, but I do know that until that option contract has completely been closed out and uh, no longer in existence, the person that owns that option contract has the right to exercise and buy stock if it's call if it's a call and exercise or sell stock if it's a put. It's usually about one hour after the close. It used to be uh, back in the day that it would go all the way till Saturday. They'd always say that the option stopped trading on Friday and they settled on Saturday. So there was a, a, a longer window. Yeah, you used to have a nice long window. Yeah, that, that you could actually do that. Now, uh, it, it, but you just have to realize you're not in control. Unless you close out that option, you do have that possibility of being assigned. And of course, if the stock market is trading after hours in that underlying stock, people can still react to that. And they do have about that one hour window in order to make up their mind as to if they want to exercise that option or not. And then that segues into indexes in particular. Uh, the OEX, which used to be, you know, one of the most popular indexes out there, uh, it's American style cash settled. That is still a very scary index because the futures are trading nonstop and it's a cash settled index. So uh, you could get get assigned on an OEX option after uh, a, a Tuesday close just because of what's happening in the after hours market. And part of that, too, and one of the things about that, that OEX co contract, the uh, S&P 100 index that trades on the CBOE, uh, one of the other things about that is the, the prices are subject to, uh, to that early exercise and assignment uh, that couldn't happen. So, you, so sometimes there looks like opportunities because you're like, wow, this option contract is way underpriced or way overpriced, but it really has to do with that early exercise. So... They made the, the evil stepchild, the XEO, which was American style. And the biggest reasons why they made the XEO is because they kind of screwed up when they made the OEX. Um, that was really the, that was the first index that the Chicago Board Option Exchange started to trade. It became very popular. But over time, they realized uh, the ability to exercise a cash settled index early really changes the game, especially in this day and age with 24-7 trading. Yes, it definitely does. Just an, another good reminder to our listeners, Brian, that if you're you're worried about this, if you can just close your stuff out, right? Close it out before expiration, yeah. and then you don't have to worry about any of this. You don't need to know the exact letter of the law in terms of when your window expires. You don't have to contact your broker. Um, Brian, I'm sure you're, for you guys, it's a similar – you probably have to call you guys, right? You can't just click a button on the website to do this, right? That is correct, yeah. Especially – and most brokerage firms are that way. Very, If you're going to exercise after hours, you first of all got to know about it. If you are the owner of a contract, because this could benefit you on – you know, we talk about it with the retail investors as, oh, oh my gosh, they got a sign. Uh, you know, they could also exercise. Um, they can give us a call and let us know. And with us, it is one hour after the close. You have an hour that you can – can call and make that that exercise notice if you want. I don't know what the official time is with the Options Clearing Corporation, but with us, it's it's one hour. And then you say, I want to exercise it. And then also, you know, this is another one of the pr promotion things. You know, m uh, in this day and age, a lot of brokers will not charge you a commission to close out that option. If that option is five cents or less and you want to close it out, um, you can do that. And there's no commission charge to do it. Yeah, good advice. So just uh, if you're on the fence... If you're concerned, if you're worried at all about weird things happening after hours, just close it out. I mean, it can work in your favor, like Brian said, but it, it's, uh, it can also come back to bite you pretty badly. So if you're concerned, if you're worried, just close it out and live to fight another day. All right, another question coming from 
boring with a bunch of numbers in there. <laughs> Hopefully his question is not boring. Let's see. He says, when do you just buy a call versus a spread? Is that ever the preferable option? Is that ever? Well, we never go in absolutes here. A never is not the case. We prefer spreads. I think Brian will say he does as well. If you read the playbook, that certainly is what's in there as well. Because they mitigate your outlay, they do a lot of things just to maximize the utility of that spread for you while mitigating the cost for you. But there are certainly moments when the call by itself is the preferable option. For example, you're in your stock and it's taking off to high heaven. You're in a biotech and it just got approved by the FDA and it's off to the races. You know what? Just picking up a call there is going to work pretty good. I wouldn't bother with the spread in that environment. It's maybe an option you can't get the stock. It's moving so quickly, but you can pick up the call and get that going. That's a, There's certainly options like that. We talk a lot here on this show. One of Brian's favorite strategies is the old uh, stock replacement. That's pretty much uh, using a call straight up by itself to replace stock. And that's a great use case for it. And it's a great way to just use stock. Now, of course, you can augment it, turn it into a spread with the fig leaf, writing those near-term calls against it. But the primary use case, the primary core of that strategy is just swapping a call for stock. And that's, again, a great use case for it. So there are use cases for the plain call. Brian, what do you have to say here for Mr. Boring? I don't think his question is very boring. I think his question is actually a good one. When do you like to swap in the just the call by itself rather than a vertical? Well, there, there are. Yeah, I would almost say that it's a 50-50 situation in that. If it, it's all depending on the underlying stock. If you have an inexpensive underlying, let's say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 25 bucks or so, we're going to call that an indis, in, um, inexpensive stock. The options will be inexpensive relative. And as a matter of fact, trying to do a spread, uh, you might want to get one done, but you just can't sell enough premium because it's just not there. So there are situations when you have lower implied volatilities and uh, lower price stocks where why give up that upside when just going out and buy the option contract? And as you mentioned, um, if you want to in a stock replacement situation, we're talking about options deeper in the money then, and you are actually buying an 80 delta type call and there's not a ton of time premium in them, you've mitigated it by going deeper in the money. And that's another situation where, you know, just buy the call outright. Now, with this said, and I've talked about this uh, in our midday market call, which we do on our educational platform every uh, Tuesday or so, where we're just looking for, uh, uh, we have a chartist, uh, Michael Kahn, he's a, a, this, a chartered market technician. Sorry, I struggled with that. But, uh, you know, he's looking at a charting path pattern. And we're basically looking at a one week trade in that scenario. So I don't know if I want to be in a spread because I'm not, I, I want to get that quick move and get out. So there's another scenario where if the timing is right, volatilities are okay. We're not just going crazy on vols where I might just buy an underlying option contract for a very short term trade. And I don't want to deal with that other short leg and having to close it and get out of it. So there are opportunities where just buying the call outright makes sense. Overall, on a long-term strategy, and I'm saying I'm going to do this week in and week out, I'd much rather do a spread. It's really all about what that forecast is and then trying to match the strategy with your outlook for the stock. Well said, sir. Don't want to give away that upside for nothing. That certainly doesn't make sense either. Just just to say you did a spread, that doesn't make sense. All right, let's see here. We got time for it. We can squeeze in one more here. Keeping the people happy in the new year, Brian. Let's go to <laughs> Cos 7 Mint. I guess that's how you say that. Cos 7 Mint. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. Uh, Cos 7 Mint wants to know what's the ideal time frame for it. This is kind of a, an oft repeated question. I don't think we've really discussed it too much here on the show, though. What's the ideal time frame for trading options? Is it mostly short term? You know, this is a common perception out there, Brian, that, you know, options are uniquely short duration, short term trading instruments. And, and that certainly is a popular use case. Look at the weeklies. They've exploded. They are very popular, primarily in that case for selling premium. But it, by no means is that the only use case. I just outlined a perfect example of a longer term one, the stock replacement. It's a very popular one. We talk about this on this show in particular all the time. And that's a much longer term, typically at least six months, 
maybe a year or even two years. The nice thing about options is that you have many options, pun intended. You could go all over the map if you want. If you want to go out a couple of years and maybe for hedging purposes or stock replacement, you certainly can. Or if you want to stay in the weeklies and just harvest premium, uh, you can do that. I, I'd say if I had to look at, you know, maybe maybe for the audience of this show, which is kind of basic to intermediate and some advanced retail out there, I'd say a lot of them tend to be biased more towards the shorter duration of the curve, but that's by no means total. I mean, you see advisors out there writing quarterly calls. People like to just set it and forget it every three months and not have to deal with it. There are use cases that span uh, the full array of time frames out there. But I guess in general, if I had to pick one, I would say uh, it's most people focus around that nearer duration, one month into that time frame or so. But by no means, it's, I guess it's kind of a loaded question, Brian, the ideal time, but there really isn't one. It depends on what you want to do. Yeah, and, and also we're not saying uh, ideal time to buy options, ideal time to sell options. That's a, a, a definitely a different venue between the two. Um, but with that said, I everybody seems to be excited about weeklies. Like you said, the volume has exploded. So, all right, yes, you want to do a weekly. We talked about uh, doing something off a chart, something like that. But let's make the case for the longer term instead. And I even like – I'm going to go out and most people like to sell – weekly option contracts because the rate of decay is so huge, but they don't necessarily understand the gamma and the acceleration of the option contract. So I'm just going to, you could talk all day about this one question, especially if you went through all the different strategies. Um, I'm just going to talk about selling short spreads, selling a short put spread for a net credit, selling a short call spread for a net credit. This is where I have a lot of people think, oh, if I'm going to do this, I need that huge rate of time decay. I'm just going to say that I really like to do them about 45 days out. I would much rather sell, uh, let's say my, my goal is to make 50 cents. I would much rather go further out in time, sell a spread for a dollar, maybe five points wide, and buy it back for 50 cents than try to sell a near-term option and sell that spread, say, a week or so out, and just bring in 50 cents, period, right? I would rather have the time premium and be able to adjust and be able to work the trade and say, okay, I sold it for a buck. My goal is to buy it back when it's trading for 50 cents because then I have an alter I have some things that I can do to adjust that trade because there's still some time value that's left in it. And if I'm dead wrong on my forecast and I got that short time frame, guess what? That thing's going to go against me hard and it's going to go against me fast and there's not much I can do on it. So just to be counterintuitive, um, I think everybody kind of knows that, that shorter term options, well, yeah, if you're correct on your forecast, they're wonderful. And that's why a lot of people like to trade them because most people think they're going to be correct when they place a trade. But doing longer term option contracts, even on the short side, obviously on the long side, that can help out too, in that you have the ability to work that trade and adjust it and do things with it. That time premium that's in the option contract on the long side or on the short time, short side is a buffer and it can help you out if you're incorrect on where you think the market's going next. All right, Brian, that's all the time we have here for this episode of Options Playbook. But before we go, you're in the hard seat now, Brian. You have the choice of having to pick a winner from our three questioners here, Paul, Boring, and Cosment. <laughs> Which of these three is winning the playbook this week, Brian? Well, I'm going to use just a simple process of elimination. I have not heard somebody talk about the official close in quite a while. So I'm going to go with, with Paul V. And what is the official close of the option expiration? Because that is something important. And if you don't plan for it, it can really nip you in the butt uh, by not watching the after hours trading. So I think it's a great warning and, and we should thank Paul for that. Well, there you go, Paul. You have a book coming your way. And Brian, if more listeners want to be like Paul and they want to win fun, fabulous prizes, where should they send their questions? Well, they can always send them directly to me, too, besides sending them over there to the Options Insider. My email is the options guy at invest.ally.com. That's the options with an S guy at invest.ally.com. And I really appreciate the listener questions. I love it when Mark and I get a chance to huddle up. And until the next time, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. 
The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options. Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 